Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a heart applique table runner. Now if you've never done machine applique, please watch my video machine applique lesson one and I will explain to you how to put on your fusible webbing how to select your fabrics, and how to select your decorative stitching. Okay, let's take a look at the runner that I'm gonna show you how to do. This is a 60 inch table runner, 12 and a half inches wide. I have five blocks on this table runner. There are three of the blocks with the light yellow background and two of the blocks with the blue background. And on each block, I have a large heart with different colors. So this has got the blue from this fabric. Then I chose a light blue that was also in this fabric here. And then each heart has the bird and flower fabric in the smaller heart. Okay, let's go over the instructions on how to put this together. So if you have your cell phone handy, Put the screen on pause and take a picture of this. This tells you approximately how much fabric you'll need. I recommend you always buy a little bit more in case you make a mistake. And then also what to cut out. And if you don't know how to cut your squares, then uh, watch my video, Tips for Cutting Quilt Fabric. Then here, are a, here is a summary of the instructions, assembly instructions. Then this is what fabric goes on each block. So there's two different blocks. And then once your blocks are done, this tells you what order you lay the blocks in. Okay, all right, let's look at the hearts that I used. Now I have a group of templates here. I purchased these that are heart shapes. I don't know how well you can see this because it kind of blends in with this cutting mat. But this is the largest heart that I have, but I wanted one bigger. So I traced the heart, went to my photocopier printer, and enlarged the size of the heart. So let me show you what I wound up with. Here is the original size, which is five and a half this way, and five and a half this way. And I enlarged it to this size, okay? So it's now seven and a quarter across and seven and a quarter, inch, quarter inches this way. So you wanna make sure when you're drawing your hearts that the smaller one, when it fits in there, that it's gonna show enough of the large heart fabric. Now, if you're gonna draw your own, let me show you how to draw your own um, heart. Take a piece of paper, fold it in half. Okay, so fold your paper. Then draw, so you might wanna mark the height. Let's say you wanna make the seven inch heart. Draw a line as to where the seven inches are. Then draw your heart, just a half of one. Then when you're done, cut, uh, cut it out and unfold it and this is what you get. You get a heart. So this way you can draw your own symmetrical heart. Okay, let's go over how to put the hearts on your block. So, here's my background fabric and I'm just making a small version right now because it's just easier. So, put down, put down your stabilizer, whether you're using the tearaway stabilizer or the paper uh, that I recommend to use, put that behind. Then, take your large heart. Now, I've already put my fusible webbing on the back, but I still have the paper backing on it. So you need to take off your paper backing, okay? Remove that. And then lay your heart down and center it in the block. Now if you don't like where it is, you can lift it up and reposition it and then finger press it down, okay? Then Take your small heart, and I've still got the paper backing on it. Remove the paper backing, okay? And then center it in the large heart. 
and finger press it down. Now remember, if you don't like where it is, you can still lift it up and shift it in its proper place. Then take a damp cloth and lay it on top. Then take your iron and set it to cotton with steam and lay it down on the heart. Give it a burst of steam and hold it for 10 to 15 seconds. Now, you're gonna be having a relatively large heart, so you're gonna need to lift and move your iron until you cover the whole area. So you're gonna hold it 10 to 15 seconds in each area, okay? Till you've got it all fused on. Do all five of your blocks. Do all of that first. Then you're going to do your decorative stitching. So you're gonna select an applique stitch and go around the edges of your hearts. Now, when selecting your thread, look at the fabrics you're using. See what colors are in that fabric and select from those colors. So on this light blue heart, I used the dark thread because I wanted the stitching to show. And then on the little heart, I used the orange. Now on my yellow background block, on the large heart, I used yellow fabric. Now, look at your decorative stitching, figure out which ones you want, okay? And if you've never done it before, practice. Draw some shapes and practice. Okay, after you've done that, do all your decorative stitching. Then you wanna remove your stabilizer and just begin tearing it off. Now, if you need to score it a little bit to get it started, then do that, okay? Now, as you're tearing it off, don't worry about getting all of the paper that's stuck in the middle of your stitching. Leave it there. Don't spend time trying to get that off because it's not going to ruin your project if that paper's in there. No one is gonna see it. So take off all your stabilizer of all five blocks. Then you're gonna begin stitching all of your blocks together. Okay, now lay your blocks out to where you have block one, block two, one, two, one. Take your first two blocks and put them right sides together. Make sure the hearts are going in the same direction. And pin and stitch it down. Do a quarter of an inch seam. Then with your iron, press it. Then Open it up and press the seam one more time. Then stitch your next block on. So you would take the yellow block or whichever one is, was your first one and attach it on. So stitch all five blocks together. Now you're gonna layer everything. So take your fabric that's gonna go on the back and lay it down. If you're using a printed fabric on the back, make sure it's wrong side up. Then lay down your cotton batting and then your top heart fabric, okay? Then after you've done that, you're either going to pin, hand baste, or use fabric spray on glue to hold all of your layers together and you can get this spray on glue in your fabric craft stores. Now, if you're going to pin, which is usually the way I do it because it's just easier for me, let me go back to my large block. Okay. If you're going to pin, you want to take your straight pins and just have the po the uh, pointed part of the pin sticking out and away, okay? And every two, three inches, put a pin down. And you're gonna go all the way around the heart. Then after you've gone all the way around, then you wanna go in between and go out and put some more pins. You just wanna make sure that fabric is stabilized and it's sticking to, it's holding together. Then your next step would be is to do some machine, excuse me, hand basting. This is temporary, you're gonna pull it out later from this point straight out to the bottom of the block and then up here straight out to the top of the block, okay? Then take your 
walking foot. Make sure you have that on your machine because this will also help prevent your layers from slipping or little tucks uh, being stitched into your fabric. Then go to your machine and lower your needle manually right there at the point. Now I'm going to take my walking foot apart because it's going to be easier for me to show you the next step. You don't take it apart on your machine, but just is just for demonstration. So you've got your needle lowered down there. Now you're going to stitch right next to your decorative stitching that's on the heart. Stitch all the way around the heart. Then when you come back to here, needle down, press your foot up, turn it. Now you're going to go back up again, but this time you're going to gradually move out. Okay, let me get this out of the way. And right about here, you want to be half of a foot width away from the edge of the heart. So now you're looking at the edge of your foot. Do not watch your needle. Look at the edge and hug the edge of the heart. Then when you get to your basting stitch, leave your needle down, press your foot up, turn it, and continue around the other side of the heart. Then when you get down to here, the basting stitches again, needle down, press your foot up, turn. Now you're hugging the row of stitches you just did. Okay? You're taking that all the way around. I think you get the picture. So you keep going round and round. I did about four rows up here and three down there. Now you can do all of it. You can cover the entire area. Now when you come to where you're done, you're doing your last row. You want to hug in real tight, come in and in and in until this line comes uh, molds right into there. Stop, do a few back stitches to secure your stitching, and then you're done with your decorative top stitching. Now, when you're doing the decorative top stitching, let me remove this really quick here. You're going to start in your middle block, so you want to roll your ends up. So you're going to start in this middle block here and you want your ends rolled up like this. So when you're doing this outline stitch, you can manipulate your runner so much easier. You don't want your runner to get caught on anything, otherwise it'll ruin your stitches. So keep it rolled up. Then when you're done with your first block in the middle, you're going to do stitch in the ditch right here between each block on each seam stitch in the ditch then you're going to open it up and go to whatever the next block is now when you're doing your decorative stitching i recommend you use thread that matches your background fabric okay whatever that is and you keep working your way out okay now your next step is to trim the edges. Let me get this straightened out more. So we want to trim off this excess backing fabric and cotton batting. Now I've already got most of it cut off. It's best if you have a large ruler like this. It really is much easier to do. And you want to lay your ruler along the edge of your top fabric and then take your rotary cutter and cut off the excess because you want nice clean edges so you can put your binding on really easily okay then after that you want to take your binding strips okay you're going to have I believe there's about five strips being used and you're going to pin the ends together and do a quarter of an inch seam. So you're going to have about four seams. Press those seams open, then fold and press again. Okay? Alright, now you're going to start pinning it on. So take 
Let me get this undone here. Lay the raw edge of the binding here on the raw edge of the runner. Place the end somewhere here in the middle and pin it down. Now you're not going to start stitching from here. You want to go in about four inches and three eighths of an inch from this raw edge do a line of stitching and when you get to three eighths of an inch away from this side here stop leave your needle down press your foot up turn the runner and stitch at a 45 degree angle right into there then take it out of your machine fold it like this where it's straight out and even with this edge then fold it over now you've got this folded edge on this raw edge here and then pin it down and pin it all the way down and then start stitching again start from the folded end and 3 eighths of an inch from here and stitch all the way down and you're going to stitch all the way around the runner doing this type of a fold at every corner all four corners now when you get to the point where your binding ends are coming together you're going to fold it over you're going to have about have about a half an inch overlap then you're going to cut the excess off then take the ends open them up and you're going to pin the ends together Okay, and then after you've got them opened it up, fold the runner and bring the ends together, line it up really good, then pin and then do a quarter of an inch seam. Then fold it back in half, pin it down and finish stitching doing that 3 8 of an inch seam all the way along there. Now you're going to fold it over onto the back. And you're going to fold your binding over onto the back and pin it down. So you want to take this folded edge, bring it past the stitch line, and then pin it down on one side of the corner then take it and fold it over on the other side of the corner pin it down then take a straight pin press down and in fold it over and pin okay do this on all four corners and pin the runner all the way around now you have one more step and believe it or not you'll be done now you're going to do stitch in the ditch, your final stitch in the ditch, and start in one corner and stitch real close to the binding. Don't stitch on the binding, but right on this top fabric here. When you get to each corner, leave your needle down, press your foot up, turn, and continue stitching. And stitch all the way around the runner. Now on this runner, I used four different fabrics but let me show you I did the same pattern except I used two different fabrics let me get it straightened out a little bit more for you so on this one this fabric has hearts all over it I chose light then dark then light and then in this block dark light dark has a whole different look but it's the same pattern now you can do this same double applique heart on pot holders you can either do it round or square and then then this is just a single heart well I hope that this was helpful to you now my next uh, video will be how to do a four patch which is the easiest quilt block to do and I'll show you lots of fun things that you can do with a four patch and shortly after that video I will have lesson two of machine applique so to keep informed on all my future videos click on subscribe that's that red or bold letters down there at the bottom of your YouTube screen 
You click on that, YouTube will ask you for your email address, and every time I have a new video, they'll send you an email with a big button in the center. You click on that, and uh, it will take you directly to my latest video. Now, if you want to see a complete list of all of my sewing tutorials, up at the top in the little search window of YouTube, enter the sewing room channel and it will take you to my channel page with all of my videos listed there. I'm Cheryl. I'm really glad you came to my sewing room. Now see you next time and happy sewing.